Silver Danger. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Today we're going to talk about a danger with investing in silver and gold that stems from comments on a recent video of mine. In the video, my three best tips to start stacking silver and gold, one tip was to make use of ETFs in your retirement account. <laughs> Whoa, did I get an interesting reaction from people in our community. SLV? GLD? Seriously, Yankee? Are you kidding? <laughs> what about the counterparty risk? I mean, they don't have enough precious metals to cover the contracts. Wow. And you know what? Really good points. <laughs> That's why I absolutely love reading your comments. You hold me accountable, you teach me, and you challenge me to do some very careful research. Now, before we talk about the dangers associated with ETFs, I want to share a story with you about another counterparty fail from 23 years ago. Interestingly enough, it comes after a recent trip to Tim's. Tim Marshner, owner of the Coin and Stamp Shop in Manchester, New Hampshire. <laughs> okay, let me put that right down here. Now, Sterling Cannabis, as part of the Yankee Swap on the Coast to Coast show, got some of my private pickups from Tim and wanted some special, dated, almost uncirculated silver coins. And you can feel free to check out Sterling Cannabis's channel and learn more about the Yankee Swap with the links in this video's description. So I went to Tim's and picked up these gorgeous, almost uncirculated half dollars. A 46 Walker and a 1950 Benji. Oh, man. These are the dates that uh, Sterling Cannabis was after. I should put them this way. <laughs> and, oh man, they are really, really nice. The camera's not going to do them justice. But the eagle has uh, its breast feathers. Man. And uh, uh, the um, Liberty Bell has its bands. Oh man. Sweet. Stick them right in here. <laughs> and he wanted a business card too, so I'll seal them up and send them out. But before I got out of there, Tim enticed me with five insanely toned American Silver Eagles. The lady in front of me had just sold them and had left. So I was like, I looked at him and he looked at me. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> she had uh, actually, she, she had discovered them in a safety deposit box of her mom who was uh, unfortunately going into a, an elderly home. Uh, they're all dated 1987. And oh, geez, they are ridiculously toned. Oh, I mean, some of them are just like this one. It's like all black, practically on that side. And yeah, that one's pretty cool too. Again, 1987. Look at this one. It's like a two-toned, toned American Silver Eagle. I mean, that's crazy. Wow, they're all, actually they're all BU. Look at this one. This one is probably the darkest has a couple colors. Again, I don't know if the camera does that justice, but wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, I just, yeah, <laughs> I picked them up. Um, but before I could get out of there, he also sold me a bar. <laughs> yes, you heard right. He sold Yankee a bar. This one right here. And it's tone too. Look at this. Monarch Precious Metals. That is freaky. I mean, really? Crazy. What the heck am I doing? All right, anyway. I, 
I'm planning on doing another silent auction for this multicolored abomination. So, <laughs> sorry, just kidding. <laughs> Somebody might like this. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I'm gonna do a silent auction and, and all the details uh, about it are in the description. Uh, but in short, email me a bid at yankeestacking at gmail.com if you're interested in this thing. <laughs> if nobody wants it, it's going to get a detoning bath. And I'll add it to my small little bar collection that I have. Some really nice stuff in there. But anyways, whatever. <laughs> um, so I come home with the Yankee Swap Half Dollars, this butt ugly bar, and five 1987 American Silver Eagles destined for a good cleaning when I noticed... The label, Rhine Precious Metals, Seattle, Washington. So I Googled them and oh my goodness. Oh, wow. So yeah, evidently a Craig Rhine was a large and well-known precious metals dealer in Seattle back in the 70s and 80s. In a nutshell, he rode the wave up with gold and silver prices until the prices of those metals just plummeted uh, in the early 80s. What he did was entice people into investing in silver and gold, or investing in silver and gold, and let him hold it for them. He was their custodian. All their silver and gold was safe, tucked away in his safe, or so the investors thought. What was really going on was that Craig Ryan had lost hundreds of thousands of dollars and was massively in debt. And to get out of trouble, <laughs> he started running a Ponzi scheme. He would entice more and more silver and gold investors to, you know, try to pay off his debt. And he actually never purchased the full amount of precious metals he was supposed to. There was simply not enough gold and silver to back up what the investors had purchased. Wow. You can check out those links that I quickly showed about Craig Ryan in the description if you're interested. But, whoa. That should be a big lesson to people. When you buy this stuff, take ownership of this stuff. I can't, I can't imagine. I, I guess if you trusted the guy, you, you might want him to hold it for you. I don't know. I, I can't imagine having a deal or hold your silver and gold. But anyway, that story brings us all the way back to the gold and silver ETFs. So when you buy shares of well, GLD, for example, you're essentially buying contracts purportedly backed up by real tangible gold on reserve by a gold custodian. So just like Craig Ryan, there's a custodian holding the gold. What's the custodian for GLD, you might ask? HSBC. Europe's biggest investment bank, guilty of many misdeeds and outright criminal acts. Last year, they paid over $100 million to end a criminal case in the U.S. in which the bank was accused of using currency trades to swindle its own customers out of tens of millions of dollars. They are GLD's custodian. They are the firm responsible for, for, for safekeeping the gold bars that back the ETF. So what about iShares Silver Trust, the ETF better known by their ticker symbol, SLV? Well, guess who their custodian is? JP Morgan. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, so they're both slimy investment banks backing up these ETFs. 
Uh, but what what is the real risk here, you might ask? Well, let's take a quick look at just a selection from the Spider Gold Shares perspective, GLD. <laughs> and SLD is, is quite similar. There is a risk that some or all of the trust's gold bars held by the custodian or any sub-custodian on behalf of the trust could be lost, damaged, or stolen. Access to the trust gold bars could also be restricted by natural events, such as an earthquake, or human actions, such as a terrorist attack. Translation, bad things happen, and if they do, you lose. Here's another one. Gold bars allocated to the trust in connection with the creation of a basket may not meet the London Good Delivery Standards, and if a basket is issued against such gold, the trust may suffer loss. Neither the trustee nor the custodian independently confirms the fineness of the gold bars allocated to the trust in connection with the creation of a basket. Translation, some bars we have might be gold wrapped lead crap. <laughs> and if it is, you lose. And finally, if the custodian becomes insolvent, its assets may not be adequate to satisfy a claim by the trust or any authorized participant. Translation, HSBC could go belly up. And if it does, you lose. <laughs> what they don't talk about is the real possibility that whatever gold HSBC actually has may simply not be sufficient to redeem all the gold contracts against it. But that's a real possibility. And guess what? If there isn't enough gold, you lose again. <laughs> okay, so why did I actually suggest people consider SLB and GLD in their 401k, IRAs, or similar retirement accounts? Two reasons. First, many people are restricted to paper assets in their plans. They don't have a choice. They have to either gamble in bonds or stocks, mutual funds, money markets, or look at ETFs like SLB and GLD. And second, short of a complete collapse, which I do believe is coming, SLB and GLD can provide a paper hedge against the stock and bond market crash. They both did after the Great Recession, and they could still save you money in the next recession. Hmm. Well, that said, be very, very careful what you invest in, especially with gold and silver ETFs. Just, if you can, buy the physical stuff, even if they are ridiculous. Ridiculously toned. I mean, really. You know, <sighs> they're getting a bath, guys. These are going to be shiny. But if anyone is interested in these things as well as this bar, let me know. Email me at yankeestacking at gmail.com. But Whoa, I mean, they are going in here if I don't hear from you. <laughs> and well, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.